Hello everybody, it's Rabbit here, um, another StarMade video, in case you hadn't worked out from the title of the video, which I shall no doubt put on it when I upload it. Um, I decided I'm going to do an updated video on the Smedit installation uh, tutorial. The other one, obviously, audio quality and things of it wasn't that crash hot due to having a shit microphone at the time, so I thought I would put up a much better quality one um, that's easy to follow and should hopefully be in glorious 1080p. Anyway... Uh, if you're here, you should already know what SMET it is or what it's going to do, which is, it says here, multi-purpose editing tool, blueprint modifier, create, and the main reason most people will use this program is to import models uh, to convert into star-made blueprints so you can import, you know, classic sci-fi ships or, or models of ships, you know, you can get in a 3D modeling program, build a model, put it in SMET it, and it'll convert it into um, a blueprint for the game. But there are some pros and cons, and I'm here to try and make life easier. Um, if you don't know what Smedit is, go watch. One, I mean, Starmade is. Go watch one of my other videos uh, and visit Starmade. Uh, Starmade doc net or Starmade org. Um, I will provide a link um, to this download here. You will need a Starmade registry account, which if you're playing Starmade, you should already have, and you will need to log into the site over here um, to be able to get the download if you click download you're not logged in as i'll demonstrate here it'll say oh actually it's letting me download it normally it says you must be logged in to get this okay well we'll step that step you just go here you click download um you save that to your file um hard drive and as you can see it's a zip file so you need to be a, a way to extract it using either uh, winzip once you've got it or winrare something like that seven zip once you have it downloaded uh, you will need to, excuse me, let me change this, it was detailed, I don't know why it's showing all this now. Um, once you have, have it, you should have a file inside that zip file called uh, smedit.jar here, and you want to copy it into your main StarMade folder, where you can see these configs and the StarMade launcher. So if you can see all these fol uh, folders and files, then you're in the right spot. So you copy it in here. Once it's there, um, something you want to do is make note of the location. Um, I'm using it on Steam version, clearly. Uh, so you, if you're using the Steam version, you will need to know uh, where that folder is, and this is why. So if you, the easiest way is once you find the, the location that you need, just click up in here in your address bar on Windows Explorer or File Explorer, and you can copy it. Because when we, because Smedit needs to know this location, it needs to know where it's positioned. So once you've got that done, we load up Smedit. Now, you will need um, to enter in a memory setting here. I have 16 currently because my system has 32 gigabytes of um, RAM in it, and I like and Smedit is very resource hungry. So the more RAM you can give it, the better. Also, though, you will need 64-bit Java installed. Which you should have if you're playing um, StarMade on a 64-bit operating system and have more than four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I'll uh, let you guys Google that. Just type Java into Google, and you will be able to find it. Hey, you know you're on the net. Google's at your fingertips. So yeah, if you've got eight gigabytes, I would suggest assigning four gigabytes. Leave at least half your system memory, unless you've got an insane amount of memory like I do. And then you yeah, go nuts, but leave some memory for your operating system. So if you've got eight gigabytes, assign four gigabytes. If you have Four gigabytes, gives uh, Smedit two. Okay, pick your texture pack here. I always just go with default because it's irrelevant. Whatever your game is set up is what it'll convert it to when you load it up. And in here, this is what I was saying about needing the address, uh, the folder location. You need to sh do where I said up here, copy and paste there. And the last folder here needs to be where Smedit is. So, yep. Um, and okay it must be saving a file somewhere because it, it keeps changing to the previous version i actually had made a video so yep see if i hadn't done that if i had left it as that it would crash when i started up or it would use another star made setup that i've got so yeah here we go this location that it's in at the moment hit apply very important if you don't click apply these settings will not save and you will get problems when you click the start button but once you know that those are all set up correctly the way you want them um, click start smet up and if everything works we should get this window here 
Um, this is going... Normally it'll load up a default blueprint of a ship. This is a model I've prepared earlier. Um, but normally you get this sort of like little black fighter thing. Um, but yeah, if you're working on a model, you can actually save a default blueprint. So if you want to save what you're working on, this is a very good idea. If the program crashes, you'll be able to reload it, uh, automatically when you start it up. It'll reload the last blue blueprint you're working on. Or in this case, it's um, a Saturn V rocket I was working on here. Now once you have it here, as you can see, this model here spins around fairly quickly. It's very manoeuvrable. Um, that is because it's very, very small. As you get bigger and bigger, you see up here my memory usage is only 44 megabytes out of, um, well, 14 and a half gigabytes, even though you usually saw I assigned 16. Um, but yeah, the bigger you get, the slower things will get and the more memory will be used. So that's why I'm saying it's very important to make sure you have enough memory for what you're doing because sometimes, and some of the processes Medit will do, will consume a lot until it crashes. If you exceed that um, number on the right here, Smedit will freeze and the only way to get it closed is open up your task manager and then as you can see here, there's Java platform binary, click end task and that will close it if it ever freezes. And when it, because if it does crash, even if the, this window here shuts down, you will still find that Java process running. So if it crashes on you for whatever reason, open your task manager, shut it down with the end task button. Because if you keep reloading it, you'll end up with about 20 different Java uh, processes running. Anyway, on to what we're here for. The basics. I'm not going to get into too much detail here. Um, I'll show you a couple of little things to get you going. Um, the rest is trial and error. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend building a ship in this. I would just build a basic hull. That's what most of um, the people who use it, including myself too, will load up a 3D model generate a hull, save a blueprint, um, load it up in StarMade and then work on it in there, adding systems and things. It's just, yeah, it's too clunky to really um, be good at building, but it does have some handy little tricks in it, like you can actually give it a paint job by importing images and things, but I'll let you look at that. Uh, you can see the axis is here by telling it to draw the axis. Now where those meet is where your ship core is. I've actually located this one at the bottom because I was thinking about turning this into like a um, ballistic missile, but unfortunately warheads are crap. I was going to fill that all up with warheads, that would have been awesome. So how do we import? We go here. Um, there are four different formats. So I'm only going to be focusing on OBJ because that's probably the most common format that people will import with. You can find OBJ files all over the net for free of different spaceships and things. Or you can get a 3D program um, if, as long as you have the right plugins for it, like Blender or SketchUp, that will allow you to export models in OBJ format. Please don't ask me for any other sort of programs or advice on how to convert to OBJ. I am only here to give you some a tutorial for that. You can go Googling. So today, yeah, we will not worry about these formats because some of these are associated with getting Minecraft crap into this game, which I have no interest in. in. So we'll click OBJ. We, um, I've already had this preloaded, so we will navigate to where our OBJ file is. In this case, it's the model of my Saturn V rocket. And yep, we double click that. Now, the longest dimension is, for example, this is the longest dimension of the ship. So if I type in 100, it, that'll be 100 blocks long. The measurements are done in blocks. In game, measurement of a block is one meter. Um, so you've got your width and um, height and things like that. So if your height is the widest part of the ship, this number will affect that and everything will scale accordingly. So make sure you are entering in the dimension for the longest width or longest, yeah, longest length on the ship, whether it be width, height or whatever. So because this is from point to point, if I type in a thousand meters, it'll be from here to here, 1000 meters. So whereas we load it in, we'll type in 100. Oh, well, 110, because that's meant to be the size of a Saturn V rocket in real life. And bang, there we go. As you can see though, it's all wonky and it's off kilter and it's like, oh, which way is up, which way is down? Um, so we will quickly close that because I think this is the best way to do it. Is you close this and then reopen it. Uh, where are you, Smit? Start it up. As you can see, it only takes a few seconds. 
And if you scroll in with your mouse wheel and things, you'll see you zoom in and out, and as you can see, it'll automatically center it once you start scrolling. So let's reload our blueprint over here, import OBJ, and you'll see when this loads up, same model, so you get the same pattern. But as you can see, there um, it's not even, it's not symmetrical, because this will give you a rough estimation. There is one, there are ways called symmetry, which um, you see is reflective symmetry, and you'll have some um, copy and paste functions over here. I have another video that explains how to do the, the symmetry, so go to my channel and look that up, and that'll teach you how to do that. As I said, this is purely about using um, the, the basics of Smedit. Now, as you can see, if you look closely, you can see that it's using textures because it's using standard grey hull, in my case. Um, you've got a plug-in thing over here. If you click that, as you can see, grey standard armour, replace it with white hull, you click that, and now the ship's completely white hull. Okay. Uh, we have the modified function over here. Um, important one is we'll bring up the view axis. It's very important, I think, because, we're, as I said, where these all cross, that is where your ship core is. And you have modify and move. So if the ship core is not where you want to have it, uh, we'll start it off. It'll start off at zero, zero, zero. But as you can see, it already had settings in there from when I last used it. And that uh, those settings I had were, yeah, I was moving the ship core around. So as we can see, I won't be able to see the forward back movement. But dorsal, if I type in 20 and hit OK, now the ship core moved up 20 blocks and it's now above the ship, not inside of it. If I want to move it back down, we type minus 20, and it will go back to where it was. Now, it's important to make sure that, say, if I want to move the starboard port, you'll see what happens here is I'll go 20, and not only has it moved over that way like I wanted it to, it's also moved down, and that is because I didn't change the dorsal ventral, so it's moved down another minus 20 from zero so yeah positive is up or forward and um, negative is down or backwards and similar for the aft and right one's left one's right so the way we fix that is if I go minus tw if I move the minus 20 and make it a positive 20 it'll return back to where it should have been in the center there so we'll move that back so be aware of that so if we go zero and then go minus 20 well, did I move it out two, two times? I think I did. So we'll go minus 40, just to be sure. If not, we can quickly fix it. But bam, there you go. So if I did minus 20, it would have only gone halfway. So minus 40 because I've moved it 20 twice. So once we've got our model in and how we want it to be, we need to make it into a blueprint. Now, we can save it as a default blueprint. So as I said, you know, you name it whatever you want. And then if this crashes, it will reload the model I was working on. So let's go file, save as default blueprint. Higher. And now that will load up. Next time I load up Smetit, it'll load this model up. Then we want to go save as blueprint. And then now this is where we get our actual blueprint we'll use in game. So let's call it something like, uh, okay, Lumpy Nuts. We'll call it Lumpy Nuts Junior because we're going to be doing two of these models so I can show you the difference in resource usage. Something immature and hopefully funny. Like Lumpy Nuts Junior, let's go okay. And then we will now have, up in the blueprint folder, we now have Lumpy Nuts Junior. If you open that up, you'll see the blueprint files. But we want to also as you can see, as I've been going along, the memory usage goes up, even though I haven't really done anything except basically change the whole colour. So let's Im um, have a look at this. So if I go object, now sometimes this will work, sometimes it will not. It's, and, I, and I really do suggest actually closing the program and reloading it. So we'll do a thousand metres now. Oops, it's worked. As you can see, the memory use is much higher. And this is a one kilometer ship. Now I'm rolling the mouse wheel in and you can see it's moving much slower. But as we move in, you can see it's much, much more detailed. Things look more curved, look more symmetrical. So it's a bit of trial and error with your sizes. But yeah, as you can see, this thing now is slow and sluggish. And could you imagine trying to build a ship like this, you, you know, using the basic commands you've got in there. So it's better to make the hull and get in. I mean, 
there are things like the hollow function here that will actually gut the ship now that will crash smet it if you have any holes in your model because smet it doesn't know whether to hollow because you've got a hole in it it's like the outside and the inside of one thing um, i'll let you think about that um, so it, the, you'll when you try to hollow it you'll see the memory just keep going up and up and up until you hit your max and then it'll just freeze and then you've got to open the task manager and, and task so now we've got the big one again as I said, replace the blocks. You just match the color of the block you want. There's a drop down list, every block in the game in there. So you, you could even, um, you, know, you can swap out. I could make this hole replace it completely with lights, but we'll stick with the white hole. So replacing blocks, as we can see, it's a bigger model, so it's taking longer. And as we can see, I'm now almost up to, oh, well, I just exceeded one gigabyte of memory. So big ships, you want to make sure you've got the resources for them. And again, save as blueprint. Let's go Lumpy Nuts um, XXL and click OK. We will now have the blueprint in there and now we can just exit. Oh, are you sure you want to quit? OK. Now, there is one more step here um, because unfortunately it is not as simple as just loading up the blueprint. It's never that easy. I mean, the blueprint will load up just fine and it'll look all right, but once I load up Star Made, oops you'll see why. And, and as I said, this is, applies exactly the same way to the Steam version. There is virtually no difference to them except where they're located. Because um, the Steam version, most people have that actually in the Steam folder. So start up your StarMade, make sure it's up to date, because thankfully Smetta still works with the up-to-date StarMade, where before StarMade would get updated, it would get broken. Because in my old video, you would, if you've watched that, you will notice that I recommended an older version of StarMade, regardless if it was... Um, um, a new version out. So load up your local universe. I've probably already got stuff and junk that I'm building here, so let's see what happens. I usually prefer doing these videos in a clean um, game. It usually starts to spawn. I think this is the one where I'm working on a great big station, maybe. I don't know. We will soon find out. Hurry up and load, please, star mate. Since the AI update, it takes a little bit longer to get into your game. And here we are. Yes, we've got lots of entities by the looks of it already. Huzzah! Oh, yep, yeah, this is the actual rocket that I was working on. So, as you can see, that's a 110 metre version of it. And there's my Anchor 9 station. And again, um, I've used Smetit to um, generate a hole for that. But as you can see, that's really, really messy because it'll give you a rough approximation. It is not perfect, but as you can see over here, I have started cleaning it up. You can see I've started doing you know proper angles and things. And so you still need to do a lot of work, but it's much easier than building it from scratch. All you've got to do is basically remove blocks and make sure your dimensions are right. And that'll be a pretty goddamn awesome station when it's done. Well, Inca 9 from Halo. Okay, anyway, getting distracted here. Go to your catalog manager, and you will now see the ship blueprints are in there. Now, there's a problem though. The recent versions of StarMate, well, quite a while ago, they upgraded the blueprint system, so you've got a whole bunch of statistics. And as you can see, there are no stats here. So the problem is, if you load up the ship in game, it will spawn in just fine. Uh, where is it? There we go. Oh, where, where'd it go? Oh, let's done it over there. Okay, let's go fly over and have a look. Now, as you can see, it's generated the hull. And if your model's good enough, it'll be fairly clean. That's why the hollow can sometimes be good because if you've got stray polygons in your model, they will actually appear inside the model that you're working on. So what you want to do there is if you're in single player, just F1, F8 to get in so you don't have to cut holes in. Um, but as you can see, there, there we go, there's the inside. And as, as I said as well, you'll see that their symmetry is pretty awful. If I like remove blocks on this side or add blocks, they won't ma necessarily match up on that side. So using the symmetry mode tutorial I've posted will be good. But, so what we want to do is go here, catalog, save blueprint of entered structure and we will go might be nuts um, junior 2 so we know that it's a different blueprint. Click OK, that will save it. As we see it's appeared here now but you'll see the difference is it's now got all the stats. If you build a ship like this without that, um, I have experienced this, you might be flying through space and 
everything will be fine and then all of a sudden your ship will shut down and then if you try rebooting it it'll say you've got a 21 reboot um 21 year reboot period i kid you not that is in real time the game actually told me i had to wait 21 years for um, my ship to reboot so this is why you save it and get these stats now we've got that saved we can delete this so remember to do that very important you don't want to sit there and keep at it just to find out um that um yeah you've essentially built a, 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 a busted ship but yeah it can be fixed by saving a new updated blueprint so if you do forget you can fix that later just make sure you do it before you get on a server or start playing in game with it and just for the hell of it we'll load up the big one so you can sort of see the differences in scale and there we go let's get out of here and get back into the ship core F1, F8, because they've changed it from tab, and off we go. And then you can see there's a one kilometer Saturn rocket, and it actually looks a lot more detailed. I mean, you can see the difference. That looks like a model of the Empire State Building. That actually looks like the thing that flew to the moon. So, even though that one there is actually to scale, 110 meters, it looks tiny. I'm like, how do those astronauts fit in that? But you can see the scaffolding between the nose cone and the tip and all the sections and things the detailing stands out much more especially down here around the thrusters so yeah i hope that helps you out and you can get into smet it and generate some holes and things and this has been of some assistance to you um, if you have any questions or need any help and i am able to answer i will just leave a question down in the comments below uh, um, if I don't answer straight away, I will get around to it eventually. YouTube doesn't always notify me that somebody's given me a comment and stuff. Um, and yeah, enjoy um, messing around in Smedit and getting your ship designs out much faster than you may previously. But yeah, I would suggest that you just do holes with it because you're going to give yourself a hard time and waste your um, time actually if you try building ships in it. Build a hole, get it into game, you're done. All right, this is Rabbit Out, and this has been um, a new and improved, uh, hopefully, uh, Sminit tutorial. Uh, if I've forgotten to cover something, let me know, and I will try and update it either via one of those overlay message things, um, annotations, that's it, or I will update it in the description. Um, but yeah, I'll provide links to getting Sminit, um, as well as StarMade, in the video description. Thanks for watching, um, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.